Thank you for the prayers of our sisters. Thank you for them being here. Thank you for us seeing another Wednesday. And Heavenly Father, we do have a, a very young person here with us in the room. Dear Lord, bless this young girl, dear Lord. Be with her as she goes through life. Leaning and praying and depending on you, dear Lord. Touch in the name of Jesus. The chaos that's been going on outside today, dear Lord, touch in the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus, Lord, touch this body one more time. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We're back. We're back again for another week. And we are still, as we've been since March, in the book of Romans. Romans, pro-Romanos, Romans, the epistle of Paul to the people of Rome. And this is such a rich, rich, rich book. And it seems like we've been in chapters six and seven for a long time. And it looks like we're going to be into it for quite some time still. But we're still leaning and depending on the Lord. We left you in verse 13. He then, who is good, becomes death to me. Certainly not. But sin, that it might appear sin, was producing death in me through what is good so that sin through the commandment might be exceedingly sinful. This is very deep stuff. This is very deep because you have to remember, and I, I think I pointed this out to you the last time, unlike the other churches and the other uh, area of the letters that Paul wrote, Rome was very different because the people there were a little on the different side. It's kind of like modern day man. Um, you just go out in the streets and just pick 50 people just at random, no matter the race, creed, or color, and bring them back in here and sit down and ask them what do they believe, what is good, what is bad. And you get some very interesting thoughts of what is good and what is bad. And what, what, what one person thinks is good, another person will think is bad. And what one person thinks there's no such thing as good, there'll be some people that will think there's no such thing as, as bad. So. Paul was being very, very uh, deep, and we, here's a big word for you, cerebral. He was being very cerebral because he wanted people to understand this. So we're just taking one verse today, and it's coming out of the 14th verse, 7th chapter, verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, soul under sin. We're going to use that for a title. Sold under sin. Sold under sin. There was a um, George Gray Bernard was a sculpture in the 1800s. And he sculpted this marble statue. And in this marble statue it depicted a man and the people being good and being evil. And it was basically called the two natures of men. So you have these men grappling with one nature and grappling back with another nature. And we are still there today. Um, and this is why it is so important for the Holy Ghost to be real in your life. I had some of my, two of my cousins were here last Sunday. And after church, we had a conversation here before they went back to the Bay Area. And we got into this deep conversation. I loved it about good and evil and things of that nature. Because in church, church today, we don't want to deal with that anymore. We just want to know that we can get to a next level and get to the next financial boom and this, that, and the other. And we don't want to deal with the two natures and what Paul is telling us 2,000 years ago, and it is still prevalent, that's a big word for you, and relevant in 2022 today, is that people are still warring with these two natures. Um, I've lived long enough in my life to see men war with their natures over certain situations. I've seen women war with their two natures over certain situations. And that's why it is so important for us, brothers and sisters, to have the Holy Ghost in our lives because the Holy Ghost will keep you. And when you get to those two natures and those wars come with inside of us, it'll help you do what is right. Now, some people will say, 
Well, I can do what is right. I don't need the Lord. And for example, there was a very well-known entertainer. If I call his name right now, all of you on YouTube, all of you here in auditorium would know him. He got sick a uh, few days ago and he was in the hospital and his natures must have been warring because the people are saying, well, people are sending you prayers and well wishes. He says, I don't need the well wishes. I don't need prayers. I can fight this thing myself. That made me shudder to think about this man because I don't know if this man is a Christian or not. Who knows what his beliefs are, but it was an example of his nature. One, I don't need this. I can stand on my own too. If you have a lot of people with this type of attitudes, no, you need the power of the Holy Ghost in your life. It is, it is important. It is dire. Uh, a lot of the consequences and things that we deal with in our life is because we do not allow the Holy Ghost to take total control over who and what we are. These, these natures are, are, are warring constantly in our lives. I, I knew a man many years ago, nicest guy, he would give you the very shirt off of his back. But, but, but sometimes you could say certain things to him and rub him in exactly the wrong way. And man, you would just about have to have a, a whole militia or army behind you because he, he would get so angry about things uh, when you mention certain subjects. And I don't know where he is today. I don't know if he ever changed any, but I know he nearly went to fights. He nearly went to the trunk of his car to get a gun. He nearly wanted to hit this woman in the head one time with a, with a beer bottle. Your people, you are, their, their natures are warring, but it is, it is important that we allow the Holy Ghost. If Jesus is in your life, let the Holy Ghost take control of who you are if you are totally saved. Hallelujah. Let's read that version. Let's read that verse one more time, but from another version of the Bible. The law is good then. The trouble is not with the law, but with me. Because I am sold into slavery with sin as my master. A lot of people, slave sin has become their master. Uh, I've known men over the years who became uh, horrifically uh, addicted to pornography. I mean, horrifically to the point where it messed up their relationships, it messed up their interpersonal relationships, it messed up um, their minds with the opposite sex, with women and all like that, because they did not call on the Lord, Lord, I'm having trouble here, Lord, fix me, Lord, touch me, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray thee. And the Lord, the power, how many of you know the Lord can give you power over your, your, yourself, over your nature, over your sin nature. When we look at sin, and the, listen and look at that text one more time. Verse 14, for we know that the law is spiritual. Fumanakios, fumanakios, spiritual. A lot of times we'll say, well, I can deal with something and I have control over it. Well, how do you, you don't know this, but a lot of things in your life um, are spiritual and you have to be careful of them because it's a spiritual. Here's something that I didn't learn for many, many years. A uh, preacher back in Buffalo and I had a conversation one time in a class and it became very clear to me when he told me this. A lot of men, for example, uh, when I came along, you had men that would say, well, my wife says she doesn't care what I do as long as I'm home by 2 o'clock in the morning. Well, a whole lot of stuff could happen from whenever you left town until you got there. How many of you know you're in a spiritual relationship? When you stood before God with that woman in, in that marriage, it became spiritual. When you sleep with somebody, it's spiritual. It's not something that you do by happenstance. It's spiritual. That's why you have to be careful who you lay around with. You have to be careful who you even deal with it because it's spiritual. Fumanakios, spiritual. And here it is, the spiritual, that the law is spiritual, but here it is, I am carnal. I am sarkikios. I am carnal. I'm a carnal being. People don't realize we're carnal beings. Uh, we are of 
the flesh. Sarkinios, sarkinios, sarkios, sarkinios means the flesh. So we are carnal beings. We are fleshly beings. And, and if you're a fleshly being, it means that you can, you can even still come to church, but there's another part of you that nobody will know about. That's why you gotta be careful who you get your advice from. Be careful who you deal with. Even be careful who you cohabitate and hang out with because if they have no control over their flesh, over their sarkinos, then some of that may rub off on you as well. Uh, be careful of that. Be leery of folks. Um, that's why the old folks just say, my best friend is Jesus, what a friend we have in Jesus. Jesus is your best friend. So you have to be very careful of people because sometimes if they're caught up, you can get caught up right along with them. But I'm very, very careful of that. If I'm around somebody and I see where they get caught up in certain things, I'll maybe go this way. Or if I feel like they're the kind of person that will, likes to, they like to, let me get frank with you, they like to dig a ditch for people. I stay away from those kinds of people. Sometimes people will say, well, you said this and this, and I'm, I'm in my house all by myself, minding my own business. I'm not bothering them, I don't care about that, I don't care. I mean, here it is, when you're with people that are sideways, if you're not careful, you can go sideways right along with them. This is one reason why a lot of people can't get people in church or get them to stay, because you're sideways with them. You've got to be careful of your carnal self. You've got carnal relatives and you know that you can't seem to get them in church just because you let them be carnal. Let me give you a good example of that. I don't care who came and stayed at my parents' house. If you stayed at my parents' house, it didn't matter if you were the biggest drunk in town, you were not gonna drink no liquor in my parents' house. That wasn't gonna happen. If you came to their house on a Sunday, Saturday night and woke up, you woke up in Tillman Wade Senior's house on a Sunday morning, you were going to church that morning. There were no if, there were no ands, there were no butts. There were no drugs allowed in that house. There was no dr dr drinking. There was no carousing. There was no craziness. Because my father, he believed in this Bible, the whole Bible, from Genesis to the book of uh, Revelation in the New Testament. What we've got to do is stand by the word of God. That's why we have such a power problem with our nature. That's why when we deal with the sarkinos, our carnal self, our fleshly self, is that we do not want to stand with Christ. Hallelujah. Soul under sin. Parikasa. Parikasa. Soul under sin. Soul under the power of that evil nature. It's a terrible thing to get sold under that under that evil nature. Brothers and sisters, it'll, it'll, it'll make you cuss people out when you don't want to cuss somebody out. It'll make you say ugly things about people when you don't need to say ugly things about people. It'll make you be mean to people when you don't have to be mean to people. But here it is, brothers and sisters, when you have been sold, you how many, wait a minute, let me just read this scripture for you. First Corinthians, the seventh, Chapter verse 23, you were bought with a price. You do not become slaves of men. You've been bought with a price. You've been bought by the precious blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who died on Calvary. But guess what? He resurrected out of that borrowed tomb on the third day morning with all power in his hands. That's we've been bought with a price. And people don't seem to get come to church. I watch people, even I'm talking about church people now, come to church one week, go to church, and it seems like they were never bought with anything. Brothers and sisters, you got to stand before the Lord one day. Does that bother you? Do you understand that you may not wake up tomorrow morning? You're going to stand before the Lord? That bothers me. I want him to say, serve it. Well done. I've been bought with a price, and I have to remind myself. I have to even tell myself, you, boy, you've been bought with a price. You can't be a slave to sin. You have to be careful of following people that are, uh, that are carnal and of the flesh. Hallelujah. Some new believers, here it is. They've been bought with a price, but uh, now 
the con they're not really conscious of the fact that they have an evil nature. When you've been saved, I'm talking about really saved, you become conscious that now that nature inside you is, is warring with you all the time. Um, I can remember many years I ran for my baptism. When I was finally baptized, I was 12 years old. Now some people say, well, you're still kind of young. Yes, I was young, but I knew I had been bought with a price. I knew there was something different about who and what I was. I knew there was something different about the walk I was supposed to have with Christ. I knew there was something different about who I was supposed to be in the Lord. And then when you know that there's something new and different about you with the Lord, you, you know that. Verse 14 again, for we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, soul under sin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah today. Likewise, Romans 6.11 tells us, likewise, you also um, recommend yourself to be dead. Reckon yourself to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. You have to keep telling yourself that. You have to keep reminding yourself that. That's why I don't understand this. These modern people now that get up and talk about, well, you don't have to talk about the death, burial, and resurrection. You don't have to talk about Jesus. You should talk about more modern things. You should talk about things that people want to hear. People will lead you down a primrose. That's a big word, a fancy word, an old-fashioned word that means they'll lead you down the wrong path. You have to constantly, first of all, remind yourself, listen to that verse again, to be alive, to be dead to sin, but alive in God and Christ. Jesus, you got to tell yourself that all the time. You have to remember that. Then you have to remember remember to tell somebody that. Then you have to remember to live within that first, to be dead to sin, but alive in God in Christ. Oh, Jesus, our Lord, that's a mouthful, but you got to go there. If you have a sinful, wicked conversation this week, you that means you haven't reminded yourself of that particular verse. It might be maybe that verse you heard me say, you heard some of the preachers say, you heard some of the radio say, you heard an old mother in the church say, it goes in and out, in and out, but you got to remember it, re remember it and stay there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're almost through Romans, the fifth chapter. Verses 1 and 2, just a couple of pages over. We were just here just a few months ago. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace, shalom, with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into his grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of Glory to God. That word glory, doxa. If you're having trouble in that nature, remember who you are in Christ. Remember the grace, the doxa of the Lord, the glory of the Lord, the happiness, the, the magnificence of who our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is. Still in that fifth chapter, verse 5. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. For when we were still without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. So that Holy Spirit that was poured out to us, thank God for the power of the Holy Ghost. I know the men that told me, you know, told me I want to get my gun on that person, but that Holy Ghost restrained me. That Holy Ghost stopped me. I heard women say, I wanted to run away from my husband. I saw another man, but the Holy Ghost restrained me. The Holy Ghost stopped me. I've had people say, I was going to steal that money from that bank, but you know what? That, that, that doxa, the glory, the power of the Holy Ghost that was poured on my spirit, my sin nature, stopped me, restrained me. That's why it's important, brothers and sisters, that the Holy Ghost be real 
and relevant in who and what we are. That's why 1 Corinthians 11.1 1 says, imitate me just as I also imitate Christ. That same 1 Corinthians 11.1, 1, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. That same uh, 1 Corinthians 11.1, 1, follow me as I follow Christ. That same 1 Corinthians 11.1 uh, 1 says, let's follow the Messiah. Let's follow Christ. Follow him. Paul was perfectly right with telling us, follow him as we follow Christ. Brothers and sisters, do 1 Corinthians 7.5, do not derive one another except for concert at time that you may give yourselves to fasting and praying when times get hard when that nature seems like it won't let you go you've got to fast and pray in the name of the father the son and the holy ghost and allow the holy ghost to be real inside of who and what you are and come together so that Satan does not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. If you've got a lack of self-control, go inside your prayer closet and do some praying. Push that food away from the table. Turn that television off and do some more fasting and praying, my brothers and sisters. If you have a trouble of your self-control, if your nature is warring hard inside of you, give it to the glory of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ and thank God for the power of the Holy Ghost being real and relevant in your life. Follow and let the Holy Ghost lead you. Let the Holy Ghost direct you. Let the Holy Ghost guide you. 